Hello everybody, welcome to this Auto Retail Live event in association with AutoTalk. I'm Mark Sims, editor of Auto Retail Bulletin, and I'm joined by Stuart Niblock, CEO of AutoTalk, Simon Dixon, founder of Rockar, and uh, Tony Whitehorn, CEO of Hyundai UK. Afternoon, gents. Um, today we're going to be talking about Rockar. We'll get into our discussion in a moment, but first let's have a look at this introductory video. Situated within the Blue Water Shopping Centre in Kent, Rockar promises a very different car buying experience. The brainchild of Simon Dixon, Rockar has been created to challenge the traditional car buying process in every way. From my point of view, I've been in, involved in the industry 20 years. I was involved building one of the, at the time one of the largest motor groups in the UK called Dixon Motors. But it actually, it was the 10 years that I had outside of that business that really influenced me about coming back into the motor industry and, and changing something because it was the lack of quality in the in the buying experience that drove me to want to start Rockar. And the things there was the fact that there was a very dis a disconnect between how other businesses had developed, other retailing businesses developed, and hadn't used um, the web, digital content, or anything to change the process. So I felt very strongly that those things needed to come back into this industry. So starting with Rockar Fresh was the way where we decided to do it. The rationale behind it is the industry has been the same for 120 years and things needed to change. We need to get up to speed with what's happening in all different retail sectors. So that's why I came back with Rockar. By citing Rockar within a shopping centre where millions of car driving customers visit every year, it also addresses the challenge of accessibility in congested urban areas where it isn't always possible or profitable to establish a traditional dealership. We opened the business in um, November, middle of November. Um, nobody knew about Rockar before we opened. Uh, it was pretty much kept a secret and the, the business has performed on all fronts extremely well. As of yesterday, gone past 90,000 people have visited our store, which is a quite incredible number of people that have been in and, and, and touched the product. And we've all sorts of other positives that have happened. We've sold more cars than our expectation. We've done more test drives than our ex expectation. Um, we've got a higher percentage of women buying product from us than men. So uh, we can go on. There's lots and lots of positives that this, uh, this new and first store of Rockar has created. Rockar is all about empowering the customer to be in charge every step of the way. The engaging store design lets you browse as you wish, with full digital content to explain the journey ahead. 40% of our sales are completed away from home, but the purchasing journey starts with the store relationship. So that, that shows to me that customers are happy to visit the store, find about the products, and then 40% of them are happy to go home and, and complete that purchase. That's a real positive indication about the use of digital content. You can see what Hyundai can offer. Configure your new car, book a test drive, choose your finance option, sell your old car, track your delivery, all without ever having to talk to a salesperson. Our point of view is all about the experience. Typically in a traditional environment, the experience that a customer has is 95% of it is about the transaction. The whole interaction with the salesperson is about the deal and doing the deal. Where actual fact, there's a lot more to it and customers are telling us, and I felt certainly when I was buying cars for the last 10 years, in that environment, that it's more about the product, understanding the product, the benefits of the product, and maybe for us, well, Rockar sees it, that it's actually 5% of the time is about the actual transaction and 95% of it is about the experience. So, so using digital to help and enhance that experience and then using people with inside the business to change that experience as well, that's, that's what is important for us. Instead of salespeople, or indeed anyone with a conventional motor retail background, you'll find Rockar Angels. They know all about retail, and they certainly know about the Hyundai range, but it's not all about the sale, and that's another key part of changing the car buying experience. Where in a conventional purchase, you're guided around the showroom by a salesperson on commission. In Rockar, the Angels are simply there to help, and the car buying process is essentially digital. Having seen a car you like, you could, if you wanted, complete the whole transaction online. There is no haggling. No sales pitches. You can trade in your old car at the same time, and Rockar works out the price for a part exchange based on the information you give about make, model and mileage. You can also book a test drive, either in store or online, with cars available from the Experience Centre within the Blue Water car park. 
Rock Art U Drive provides a fleet of brand new Hyundai models, available at a time that's convenient for the customer. And if you want, that can be an unaccompanied test drive. So again, Rock Car is removing a traditional pressure from the car buying process. Fair to say is that we are now from, from literally opening in November when nobody knew about Rock Car at all. We're now consistently one of the largest retailers of Hyundai products in the UK. So I think that for itself tells us tells a story. We didn't have a customer database to approach, we had nothing else, but the customers visiting the store saw the, saw the positiveness about the proposition and they were encouraged uh, to, to purchase a, a Hyundai product. If you class it as a traditional a comparison to a Hyundai dealer, we, we have a, a very different demographic. One is that we get more women visiting the store than men. Um, we have a much younger profile, so our average age of customer purchasing, for, purchasing from us is 39 years old, which is considerably different to, to, to Hyundai's main network. And just generally, we've got a, you know, a, a wider profile of, of customers visiting the, the store and visiting the brand. One of the things that we're very proud of is that 95% of our customers are what we call new to brand. They've never considered a Hyundai before, so that's really important for us and really important for the brand. In many ways, Rockar is an experiment. It's intended to be disruptive, to interrupt your shopping outing and bring you in to look at cars. It's also designed to reflect today's digital lifestyle. Online, in store, no car salespeople, and in the middle of a shopping center, Rockar promises a car buying experience for the digital age, putting the car buying process firmly in the customer's hands. Well, I'm looking at some of the questions that have already come in so far. Uh, it's clearly given us plenty to think about. Um, Stuart, can I come to you first for your thoughts? Sure. I think having seen the video, it's, uh, it's uh, a really, really interesting opportunity that's, that's been exploited here. I mean, from my perspective, as someone who's not been in the industry that long, uh, automotive historically has invested hugely in innovation of product and perhaps branding. Uh, but today it's done far less so in terms of how we actually retail cars. In fact, Brian Pash, the digital guru from the US, said recently if, if dealers don't innovate in the sales process, then entrepreneurs will step in and, and take control and do it for them and, and take a share. So it's great to see what appears to be the evolution and revolution starting from within the industry, um, especially where we've got two great brands from Hyundai and, and Rocar with great products, but most importantly, great, great customer engagement. So hopefully today's discussion will uh, allow us to find out more about how it works, but equally importantly understand about what it means for Hyundai and Rockar for the future and also for the industry as a whole. Simon, do you want to respond to that and also give us an update for the facts and figures so far this year? Yeah, I think it's really interesting a point that, that, that Stuart mentioned. I mean, from, from my point of view, I, I had um, 20 years in the industry and, and the last 10 years outside of the industry and it was actually the, the last 10 years that have informed me more about the buying experience than, than, than the 20 years in it. And that was because I was experiencing buying vehicles for myself, my family, other companies that I was involved in. And really for me there was a big frustration that the, um, the, the buying experience hadn't moved in line with other things that we buy uh, in store, online, in other retail, retail sectors. So, so really the, that, that was for me the sort of driving force behind, I guess, coming back in, back in but trying to resolve some of the issues that, that, that are out there. And for us, we've, you know, we've got up to a, in a very, very good start. Um, in, in eight months, we've had now just short of 110,000 people through the store, um, 110,000 customer visitors in such a short period of time is, is, is quite incredible. When you look at a typical uh, car dealership, may get 1,000 new car visitors in a year. Um, in terms of targets and objectives, we, we tend to set ourselves differently, and not, not in a traditional uh, form at all. Uh, in fact, in the organisation, there are only three of us that understand the financial objectives of the of the company. Um, our team in the store uh, don't have any financial objectives, no sales targets, uh, no units to sell or or bonuses to achieve. Um, we tend to, to, to see that's quite a refreshing thing, but actually, it's working as well. So, that, that, you know, these are very important to, to what Rock is about. One of the things I wondered was how does the cost. Of running Rockard, cost of premises compared with a traditional dealership. 
Well, well, for sure, being in being in blue water with the um, eye watering rents per square foot you have there, we we certainly have a a larger occupancy cost than, than a traditional dealer. Um, but equally on the flip side of that, we have probably have a much smaller marketing budget. Um, our, we see our rent, our, our occupancy cost is our investment in, in, in marketing. Um, being in Blue Water with 27 million people visiting the centre is, is where we where our marketing spend is. So in, in, in sort of like for like, line by line comparisons, it's probably very difficult to do. We don't, we don't even measure ourselves Know, management accounts in a traditional traditional format, um, but in terms of premises, we're, we're probably more expensive in terms of occupants. Uh, sorry, in marketing, and maybe people cost for a little bit less. You're on the same reward system for sales as other Hyundai retailers, but footfall to Blue Water is what it is, uh, and your sales team isn't incentivised. So when Hyundai ups its sales target, um, how do you get your sales team to sell more cars? Well, I, I would hope that our aspirations are probably ahead of uh, Hyundai's in terms of targeting, which might be quite a quite a different approach. Um, we would like to sell a lot of a lot of Hyundai's. Um, we have a huge opportunity with 27 million people walking past us. Um, the business is eight months old. Um, as I said earlier, we've attracted 110,000 people through the door so far. Um, there are lots of things for us to continue to do within that environment to keep attracting more people across the across the, the threshold into the store. Um, and to interact with test drive and the system, so there's there's lots and lots of opportunity for us. Um, and interestingly, I mean, one of the one of the main points for us, I mean, we, we achieve already a, a 95% of our sales are new to the high end eye brand. So people that would would have not even stepped into uh, a high end eye showroom are buying high end eyes from us. But also we see the opportunities that, that people who would normally ever see themselves buying a used vehicle are buying a new vehicle from us because they don't see the access. The product or don't get the ability to see new product because they always have this mindset I'm going to buy a used vehicle so I go along to buy a used vehicle um, whereas actually now in Blue Water what we're doing is able to show customers that are driving used vehicles that actually it's probably uh, more efficient for them uh, lower cost for them to run a, run a new vehicle so we've lots and lots of opportunity I'd like to think there's a, there's a, there's a long time ahead of us before we've reached um, the ultimate in our, in our objectives and, and uh, hopefully we'll be ahead of uh, what we're high date want to be as well. Tony, given that Blue Water has a catchment area of 30 miles or more, is there any evidence that Rockar's gains have come at the expense of uh, local retail? Yes. <clears throat> I think that's a, a very valid question. And I think that certainly before Rockar opened, it was a question on the, on the lips of a large number of dealers in the locality. Uh, certainly, what um, from all the reports, and, and we track this quite, cl cl quite closely, uh, when talking to the dealers in the local area, uh, what they are finding is they are finding a number of people have visited Rocker, have for the first time quite often looked at Hyundai, and have then thought, hmm, I must go look at my own local Hyundai dealer, and have ended up buying cars from the local dealer, having first gone into Rocker. So Rocker is raising the awareness of the brand, and that's probably our biggest weakness, is raising the awareness. It's doing a great job, therefore, in raising that awareness and bringing people to an understanding of the brand, and then they will want to go and experience, perhaps quite often, in their local dealership. So I know a number of dealers who, who have benefit, benefited considerably from Rocker being there. Stuart, you had a couple of questions. Yeah, in terms of, of standing out from the traditional model, I mean, you've got advantage in terms of the technology use, you've got advantage in terms of customer engagement with the angels and what is a very, very different approach there. But you've also got an advantage in terms of the location, the environment that you're, you're out there is in, where people are in a very, very different mindset. Is there any one of these in your mind that stands out as, as the thing that's driving success or is there something different? I think it's a really interesting point, Stuart. The, the, those three things, individually, they don't really gain, gain an advantage. They're not, they're not something on their own. Um, what we found right from the beginning was you can have a fantastic store design, you can have great angels, as we call them, people with fantastic personalities, great product knowledge, but if you don't have the system to gel them together, they all become separate. They can't, they can't actually help, it doesn't help them deliver. So the digital system was, was something that we started to build three years ago and it was, it was really everything that would gel the, the whole process, the whole buying experience together. And that has taken us three years. I think if somebody had said to me 
three years ago that it would take that long, I probably wouldn't be sat here today, I'd have decided to go and do something else. But it's been um, a fundamental part of making rock art what it is today and giving the, um, the customer both the, the, the power of the system, the knowledge, um, the ability to transact and do all of the, the components of a, of a, of a, a person car online or of doing that in store was a really powerful thing and it's like I say it supported the store environment and it supported the team at the front end of the business. So all three are really the key sort of part to making the proposition proposition work. Just then on the, the system perspective and one thing which automotive is traditionally seen as not being too effective at is the post sales engagement with customers. So you've got a great model for the sales engagement or the, the, the awareness engagement which leads to buying. Fantastic. What about post sale? What happens there? Well, here at Rocker, we believe in a, in a light, a light touch. Um, part of my frustration, uh, not only not only in buying in, in buying cars in the past, but also in other things we purchased, is this sort of constant hounding you then get afterwards on on the telephone or sending you an email and we must have talked to you and this other. Sort of Rocker believes in, in a lighter touch, so we we communicate with the, co the customer digitally and we follow that up again digitally and we always put that they were here if they need us to talk to but we don't believe in intrusion and we don't believe in pushing um, any other add-on products or anything else after the, after the sale of the, the vehicle. This is all about the experience of driving away a new Hyundai, driving it away in a very different way and you know, even some very simple things is um, Rockar doesn't stick anything on a Hyundai, it doesn't put a a number player, a, 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 a rear window sticker, a key ring. This is about the brand itself. So we believe in part in a really pure brand experience, um, but digitally we're there to assist the customer, and that's that's what we find. Customers do things at all different times of the day, and you know, many customers are different in the, the way they approach things. So we want to give them the ultimate flex flexibility. Um, we get people uh, coming into the store and then transacting on online at two o'clock in the morning. So it's, you have to make business open to its customers and whenever that's convenient and the right time to do things. So. Following on from that, are there aspects a, of that approach but also of the digital concept and, uh, uh, and the angels approach that could be transferred or should be transferred to a standard conventional dealership? Yeah, that's our coming on that one. Uh, I think that uh, what we have discovered uh, is that Rockar interrupts people. They don't come to Blue Water to buy a car. They go there to Marks and Spencer or John Lewis or Clinton Cards, whatever it happens to be. And whilst they are doing that, whilst they are doing normal retailing, they are interrupted by the Rockar store. They go, oh crumbs, I didn't realize you get a new car for that price. I didn't realize that you could actually purchase the, that price per month. So they are interrupted and that was something that surprised us. The traditional dealer actually is very, very good at the sort of the end of the funnel, at the end of the purchase funnel when the customer has already decided that he wants to buy a car, how much he can afford, the sort of brands he's interested in, and whether he wants to go petrol or diesel, and he's done all the research online, and then he goes into the dealer. This is right at the very start of that process. So it's fundamentally different. Now, because of that, the number of dealers that we have talked to and would agree with is they've realized that, that we should be interrupting as an industry, we should be interrupting people earlier on. Not at the very end just to fulfill their, their purchase, but actually interrupt them. So a lot of dealers today are now going out and doing product placements in shopping centers, in garden centers and uh, therefore they are trying to change people's expectations. The number of people who and they might have £2,000 in their back pocket and think, ah, oh, I can only afford a used car. Well actually, at £150 a month, they can afford a new car. And nobody properly realises that until you really pass it, and that's what we have found very much with Rock Hub. So there are certain things that we're doing that we can change, but also a lot of the digital content that we have taken to Rockar, we're also implementing in our dealers. Okay. <clears throat> One of the questions that I know um, the industry generally is talking about is, is the prospect of manufacturers selling direct to customers. Um, has Rockar effectively shown the manufacturers how they can bypass the traditional dealer network? Okay. Um, I think that people just need to understand is that uh, we have a dealer agreement, it is a franchise agreement that we have directly with Rockar. It is the same dealer agreement that we have with any other dealer. 
Uh, yes, the standards are slightly different. Um, in fact, I think they're probably more rigorous in, in part. Um, but we do not affect at all the way that Rocker Hyundai retails. It has nothing to do with that. It is an arm length agreement. Uh, so Rockar operate as a traditional dealer. My belief is, is that we, the OEM, the manufacturer, are very good at sales, marketing and distribution. The dealers are very good at retailing. We're rubbish at retailing, is my view. We should actually stick to our core competencies, sales, marketing and distribution. And the dealers should fundamentally focus on retailing, because that's what they're good at. So I don't think that Rockar really affects um, uh, very much that whole philosophy, because it's not us that are selling. It's Rocker Hyundai, a dealer in inverted commas, a retailer who is actually doing the selling. Yeah, in terms of uh, other brands doing this, then I've noticed a, a blue water over the last six months or so. That uh, in fact, this weekend was a great example where there was MG with two of the cars not far from uh, your your uh, your store, and, and uh, Infinity as well had several cars sitting there at uh, St John Lewis. Um, do you think they're trying to do the same as you, or do you think they're a threat, or, or what do you feel about that? Um, well, first of all, we don't we don't see them as a threat. Um, for, for us, it's quite interesting since we've been there. To, I think we've just about filled that mall space every week now with a different brand being there. Um, as Tony said earlier, what we're doing is we're interrupting, uh, interrupting that customer journey. They've come there to, to, to buy a new shirt or to go and watch a movie or to have a meal. And then they're seeing the rock art proposition. Um, in what else is displayed in the mall, it tends to be done in a very traditional way. So you've then got salespeople who are trying to appoint you, sit you down, slow you down, and all the sort of traditional things, which, which is, I guess is what we're the opposite to. So um, we don't see them a threat in that, in one sense, it helps what our proposition's about. It shows that we have a very easy, soft touch. We don't have, I think as I said earlier, don't have any sales training in the business. There's no sales targets. Um, we call them store leaders, the people that run the stores, that don't even know what our financial objectives are. So it's all, it's all about uh, more focusing on the buying experience, focusing on the brand experience, the product knowledge, and trusting that when you have that level of customers, 110,000 people through the door, um, that if you, do, if you impart the right experience, they're going to slowly but surely convert into buying the high, high end product. So um, I think more than merry in, in, in dealers, it probably just... Uh, it helps the whole thing, and, and in fairness, if there was one or two you know, rock art type people that come into the into the industry, I think that'll be a good thing. Um, we're definitely not fighting or wanting to make enemies out of a traditional dealer network. I, I think we're we're in a position where we can just all offer an alternative channel to to customers. Um, a really really interesting point is. Hyundai's typical age group of customers is 50, 54 years old. Ours in, in Rock are, 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 are 37 years old. So we've, we're proving that a different person coming to, to buy a Hyundai from Rock are than maybe in the traditional way. And these are, these are the other audiences that the brands need to attract. We have more women visitors to our store than men. I mean, where would you ever think that a, that a, 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 a dealership would have more women visiting it than, 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 than men? So. And actually, we sell, we sell to a high percentage, 55% of our sales are to, to women. So these are things that we think are helping to, to offer another channel. Um, this doesn't have to be in replacement of, um, this is a, 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 new, a new channel. So. Okay, well, we've got a bundle of questions that are coming online. Um, I think a good first one is, how much of the customer journey can be digitized? And how do you build a customer's trust to purchase a car online? Uh, well, well, first of all, our process is 100 percent <coughs> size, so you can you can buy a car off us without speaking to anybody. Um, the, the whole system, as I said earlier, took us three years to build, but it's that's how we digitise the the the, uh, the buying experience. Um, how do we build the trust? We build the trust by the first point of contact is coming into the store. So you'll find you'll not find Rockar marketing itself externally, um, driving people to buy online first. Um, purely, utterly buying online, I think, comes with with trust building, and, and the store is there for us to to build that trust, to show that we we are not a sales driven organisation, that we are there to support great product knowledge. Um, many people use Apple. Apple has been a great example of that, in that it's that it's focused on its product, it's focused on its brand, 
and that experience has come out of that. People will then buy from that through that trust. So definitely for us, the store environment builds the trust, and we've already digitised the the, uh, the purchasing, purchasing process. I think this is an interesting one. Um, with a new only approach, what do you see as the challenges to retaining Rockar customers if you're only valuing future part exchange with an option price format? Oh, well, yeah, I don't know whether, where it says we're only valuing at auction prices. The, the, we value at market price. So um, we, I guess, will give the same prices that anybody would give in the market for that particular product at that particular time. So um, we are successful so far doing that, and we would expect to be continually successful. Um, I don't subscribe to the point that because you're retailing used cars, you give more for them. I think you give the market price for the parties change at the time. Um, the question I was about to ask has just disappeared off the bottom of the screen. Um, and how do you retail used stock? Do you do, you do anything with the used part exchanges or do they go straight off? So currently we do, we do not retail used vehicles at all. Um, part of that decision is that how, if we want to have um, a team that can impart great product knowledge, how can I then give them, you know, hundreds of different brands and hundreds of different models to retain knowledge on and, and that's where we believe that in, in used we can't do that. So that. Therefore we will focus completely on the manufactured brand 100% um, so we, we see ourselves as doctors focused totally on new vehicles. Um, another one here for the panel as a whole. Um, this chap understands the customer can negotiate the price, is that right? And if so, how do you achieve that without traditional sales methods? Uh, well, a very quick answer, we don't negotiate on the price. Yeah, um, so it's, it's, um, the angels don't have any negotiation, there is no negotiation, the system runs the whole thing. We make sure that our pricing is, is always competitive, um, but interestingly we don't, we don't want to be the lowest price. Um, I think people have seen digital as being just a, a one track way to having the lowest prices, that's not what, what we're about, we actually want to return. Uh, strong margins and we want to be at the upper quartile of, of our dealers, dealer comparisons. So um, yeah, we don't, we don't negotiate, um, the price is the price um, and interestingly when we first embarked on this proposition um, our research groups were telling us more than half our customers didn't want to haggle and the longer that's gone on the higher that percentage has, has gone and if you take different categories of customers, gender, age, it tends to be younger and female, the higher and higher do not want to get into haggling. They want a fair price and that's our proposition. There's a question here about those demographics. Why do you think more women have been attracted to the store and were these female shoppers accompanied by a male partner? Um, not always accompanied by a male partner and if I gave you all of it, I'd be giving the, fact, the, uh, the secrets away. Um, but there's lots of things we've done in design uh, in terms of attractiveness. Um, we really worked well with the I&I team at the very beginning of this about making the store more attractive. Um, digital content that we use is part of that as well. Um, and just the environment of not having um, a lot of people peering out of offices and <laughs> making it feel very uncomfortable as you walk down. Uh, a, a recent bit of research that came back, and this, this figure has gone up and up and up, is that 48% of customers find um, a showroom, a car showroom intimidating. Now my challenge to everybody in traditional art is how you know, we need to continuously improve to make our in, in environments attractive to people. And that's not just the Blue Water store, that's the dealership. And there will be many retailers out there that are designing environments that are half the customers uh, find intimidating. So this is about what we all can do. This isn't just about what Rock Art can do. I, I just like to pick up on that. I think that um, my view on Rock Art is it's not a threat to the industry. I think that's a really important point. It's an opportunity for the industry. It's an opportunity for us as an industry to learn from it. Um, because uh, I was in the store two weeks ago and a woman walked in and she was had a little baby in a pushchair and she had two toddlers with her and she was walking around the store and I was with somebody and I said how often would you actually see that in a traditional dealer? You wouldn't. So what we have got to do, we've got to somehow try and make our dealers and there's a, we will continually sell a large part of our vehicles through our traditional network. What we need to do is we need to try and make those much more inviting for more people. That's key for us. So I think that we should use this as an opportunity to learn and embrace. That's fundamental. 
Um, there's a question here about data. Um, how is the insight of the customer profile data used? Every minute of the day. <laughs> um, we, we, we um, I mean, again, we have, we set off with, a, with an advantage. I, I didn't start the company with a legacy system. I don't, didn't have a dealer management system that I've been using for 20 years. We built a system that's built on data tables. So we have a lot of data in the company continuously flowing around the interaction with the system, the interaction in store is measured digitally and we use that information every minute of the day. I often say to people, if I'd had this information 20 years ago, it would have been an amazing place that we'd have been living in now because it's, it's quite quite incredible that um, with new technology, you tend to, I say, if you dream of something, somebody's invented it already, somebody's got done an app or something or can produce the information. If your system's built like ours, brand new in a new environment. It's so exciting. So this is, again, we share our data daily uh, with Hyundai. Um, this is sort of quite a unique position that we keep uh, supplying information because we, we as, as Tony just said, we want, we want the brand to be really successful. So this isn't just about Rock R and Hyundai. This is about what else can we help that informs to help the network and you know, our digital contents measure that way. Um, we supply data daily so that you know, we can show that what what reaction those 110,000 people are doing when they go through the store and touch the brand. Uh, Tony, you mentioned uh, that people have said when they bought a new car that they've seen it first in Rock R and that's prompted them to go to a dealer. There's a question here, is that just anecdotal or do you actually physically measure where people have seen the car? And, and no, we don't, uh, we don't physically measure it, um, but uh, I can actually think of, there's a dealership in Yorkshire who actually um, said that his customer had first seen the car in Rockar and would end up buying in Yorkshire. But there's a large, invariably, there's a large number of people in the local area who have definitely visited Blue Water. When you've got 27 million people visiting Blue Water, um, and Rockar is situated on the busiest part, which is between Marks and Spencer and the food hall, that's the busiest part of Blue Water, and Rockar is specifically positioned in that very high footfall area. It exposes our brand fantastically, and therefore a lot of people are now going, Hyundai, never thought about that, interesting car. And just picking up something you said earlier on uh, about digital, I do believe in a clicks and bricks situation, because whenever we have put cars, for instance, very recently we put an iX20 in the Rockar store, and up until then I don't think that they had sold an iX20, and within two days they'd sold three. So it is something about that you do need a physical presence uh, and also I think that it is that combination of a physical presence of the car, it's a very good digital positioning and it's an excellent individual and it's linking those three together that I believe any dealer can do um, and we are trailing it um, with Rocker. There are two questions related here. Um, one says, is part of the success of Rock Art its novelty value? Um, and the other one says, is it the success, or is one of the reasons for it being a success, the lack of competition in Blue Water? Wow, okay. Um, I sincerely hope it's not a novelty. Um, I think what's proving now, month on month, we're, we're selling more vehicles, we're increasing our store uh, visits. So I think if it was a novelty, that would have been probably over in the first, first quarter. Um, certainly the feedback, if you were to read, the customer feedback we get from people who purchase from it is like they're writing our proposition. It's, it's word for word. They're enjoying the environment and the changes and the stuff that's happened. Competition. Um, I am the only uh, only car retailer in Blue Water, so I guess you could say I've got no competition in Blue Water. But you know, all those people are driving there. Ninety-three percent of people that um, go to Blue Water drive a vehicle. So at some stage, they bought cars or are buying cars from other people. So I guess. They've still got, still got competition. Do you have? So, 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 can I just pick up on that? It's quite fascinating uh, when you think about the competition because the average spend in Blue Water uh, is, I believe, £250. Yeah. That's how much the average person spends in Blue Water. Now, historically, if we had been advertising our cars at £15,000, people would have walked past. Today, they look at it and go, £150. £150 a month. 
I can afford that. Actually, I've been, I can buy a phone or a, my TV is actually £150 a month. So now the competition isn't with other cars. The competition is with a phone or a TV. And that's, to me, a true retailing competitive environment. Yeah. yeah, question then, so um, undoubtedly there's great, great success here, but what about scalability, either in terms of alternative malls or in terms of other locations? Will this scale and, and, and how? Yeah, I, I think for Rocco, we, we you know, our ambition is to, is to take this into the what we call the Premier League shopping centres of the UK, of which there are probably 10 to a dozen that you would put into that, that group. Um, we, we see this is putting the products and, and the proposition where customers are, are shopping, and just because that's happened in Blue Water, it's the same you know, in Sheffield or in, in Newcastle or, or Birmingham, wherever you are in the country. The, the, these these centres are attractors, um, attractors for a, a buying experience, whether it is, as Tony just said, your, your, your mobile phone or whether it is for a car at the moment. There are no, no alternatives for cars, so we're, we're pushing to, to sort of represent ourselves in those, those key shopping centres. And um, yeah, it, this, this time last year we, we were all research and talk, um, and a lot of money got into a system. Um, now as we sit, we're, we're transacting and it's happening and customers are enjoying the experience. So we've got a lot more confidence to, to be rolling this out, and we will, we will roll out shortly another one, and um, hopefully, you know, more will continue. Is this something you think that would work for all brands, be the, the volume or premium or luxury, or is it, is it certain brands that may work in this sort of environment? Um, I think it will work for all brands. I think the challenge will be how the brand fits the profile of the shopper uh, that's already going there. Um, at the end of the day, cars are bought exactly the same way. Uh, they're bought exactly the same way in, in the UK as they are in America and the rest of the world. Um, the difference in the sales process. So um, we see that this isn't just a, a UK thing. This could be you know, a Europe, global. It could be. It could, it could work anywhere. Um, it's just as I said earlier, putting putting cars in the right environment digitally. As Tony said earlier as well, very very important to make sure you've got physical physical product. This isn't just a a uh, showroom with a lot of iPads in it and expect people to transact. Physical product really works al alongside a digital process. There's a couple of questions here on pre-registering, whether you would revert to a pre-registering strategy if you didn't, admit, uh, didn't hit a Hyundai target. Um, currently we don't do anything <coughs> to hit a target. We seem to naturally be achieving our targets, which is a nice position to be in. Um, you, I could talk all afternoon on pre-registering. Uh, yeah. my, my 20 years of being in the job was full of constantly pre-registering vehicles. It's not a new thing, it's been around forever. Um, it's a tactic that every manufacturer still seems to be using after, after 10 years of being out of it, coming back and seeing all the same things happening. Um, it, 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 in retail in terms, it's probably a month end price pointing uh, thing. I think ultimately, longer term, it shouldn't exist. And, but I probably have been saying that for 20 years. And so. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's probably say, been saying it for equally the same. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a mechanism which is, is bonkers, really, that you know, to meet targets at the end of a month. So. I've also got three related questions that I'm going to try and lump into one, which is about servicing and after sales. What, what servicing do you offer? Um, and what is the setup for after sales? And how do you make it consistent with the retail model? So we, we have a, a service agreement exactly the same as every other Hyundai dealer. We just change the process from a customer point of view. So a, a customer first of all books their service with us online or in the store so at a time that's convenient to them. Um, and that's seven days a week, same opening hours as Blue Water, so that's long opening hours. And they return to Blue Water when they want to go shopping or to the movies or whatever else they want to do, and they drop the vehicle off with us. So, so our, our whole philosophy was to make servicing convenient and, um, and, to, and at a time when customers were doing something else. So rather than make a, you know, a, a specific journey, which when we did the research, that was one of the biggest criticisms that they have to make a specific journey. So ease, time, drop off. That's our proposition. Our, our, our servicing is done a mile away from the, 
from Blue Water in a, in a commercial unit, uh, which is fully branded to, to Hyundai's uh, corporate standards. And uh, we have a service reception there, just nobody ever goes to it. The drop off at Blue Water. I've got time for one more, and um, this is a really good one. Um, the human element. One of the key strengths of a traditional dealership is that an individual does build up a relationship with the salesperson. Does the angels concept work that way? Yeah, our customers build relationships with the team. Um, I've worked in a lot of businesses over the years and have, and have always been a huge team believer. And what happens is in teams is you decimate teams by giving individuals objectives. So they end up um, looking after themselves. It's, it's just the human, human nature. Because we don't have any of that, our teams our team works the team. So everybody is briefed and we have people working four hours a day or two hours a day. So we have different shift patterns and, and, and part-time and full-time employees. But everybody's briefed of what's happening. Everybody is briefed before they enter the store, of uh, before they go on the store floor of who's booked in for a test drive, who's having a handover. So our angels are there to, to have personalities and to build rapport with, with customers. And um, you'll find when a customer writes back in on a survey, they'll name two or three angels. Um, and that's what we want to have. We want to have a consistent experience no matter who you meet within the business. Great. Okay. Well, we are out of time. I'm going to have to wrap this up. Thank you to Stuart, Simon and Tony, and thank you everyone who attended. Uh, we will be sending out a link that will enable you to view this webinar again and which you'll be able to forward to friends and colleagues. And we'll be sending out a short survey on the event to help us develop further webinars. Um, I hope to see you at our next event. And if you want further information, you'll find it online at auto-retail.co.uk.